Hey there, it's Reverend Yen, founder of Evolving Enneagram. If you've been seeking a compassion-based contemplative approach to Enneagram inner work, you are certainly in the right place. We are in week 13 of a 52-week Sunday talk series based on this book by Orrin J. Sofer, Your Heart Was Made for This. And uh, we are on the topic of courage. We are starting it and we will be exploring this topic for the next two weeks. So we are also on a break right now in our contemplative practices in the Enneagram group. So I hope those of you who are in the groups are enjoying your break, but also uh, taking some time to uh, do some contemplation with this topic. So today we're going to explore the topic of courage and the Enneagram from the perspective of the interior movement of courage, right? Because a lot of times when we think of courage, what we think of can be very external. Right. Uh, and not to discount it, but like the bravery of uh, the people who uh, protect and serve our country or our neighborhoods. Right. Uh, the bravery of those uh, with disadvantages who overcome those. So we're talking about things that like make the news. Right. So today I want to talk about the kind of courage that often does not make the news and that still nevertheless happens on a regular basis when you are engaged in deep inner work, the work that transforms the world from the inside out, but may not be visible to others. So I want to start with a quote from uh, Sofer's book where he talks about some of this uh, courage inside, right? Interior courage. So how much courage does it require to remove the mask we wear every day and allow ourselves to be emotionally naked? What does it take to say with clear eyes and a steady voice, I don't know? What does it take to trust that who we are in this life is enough, just as we are? That we aren't defined by what we do, how much we accumulate, or even how much we give? That sometimes we need to set limits and say no to people we love that each of us belongs here deeply and intimately just by virtue of our being part of the human family and that alongside all of the good that we can do in the world, one of the most valuable things we can offer is our capacity to keep feeling. We can give the gift of walking through the world with a courageous heart. I love this quote and, and this um, uh, invitation to remember these more interior acts of courage. Uh, as Sofer reminds us, the word courage comes from the Latin core, C-O-R, that actually means heart. And so the, there's this idea that courage maybe isn't just about how we behave, right? But it's almost like this wholeheartedness with which we show up in our lives and in the world. And so from this contemplative Enneagram perspective, I'd really love to invite you to consider how staying full hearted, right, and open hearted in the world is one way that we uh, transform the world, um, that we commit a radical act of bravery in our time where we, we stay open hearted enough to allow the purification of our inmost being and our inner transformation to move outward into the world, right? Not to close our heart and almost look at the contemplative life as a retreat from the world or a hiding from the world or a sheltering from the world, but rather a a boldly being in the midst of it, but from a different place, a place uh, with, uh, again, wholeheartedness. So um, the other piece about it is, especially because we are on break this week, and you know, I want to make sure that we're not fully invested in this model of everything is like work, inner work is work, but, but really an invitation this week on my part from me to you to explore the ways in which you're already courageous. And so maybe we don't take the time to acknowledge these acts of authenticity, right? That maybe aren't obvious to the world that we're choosing something in defiance of uh, what our Enneagram type would normally celebrate, right? Whether it's like for me last week, uh, I have to admit, you know, there was something like it wasn't 
just a given, uh, even though I'm a minister and even though I teach contemplation, that it's not just a given that I'm going to take two nights away in solitude and silence as I did. And that the courage in that for me is this, this idea that I can step away and I can value my being, not just my doing, and that it's going to be okay, right? Like that, that it's really going to be okay that even, because I can rationally tell myself things like, well, well, you're, you're a business owner, right? And you don't have an assistant. And like, what happens when you go away? Do you lose work? Or, you know, there are things where I feel, um, I feel tension around and I'm choosing this first and foremost inner movement of saying yes to something that is, that my soul is yearning for, right? So that's something to consider that courage isn't just for anything. It's not just for the sake of being courageous, but perhaps I, I might even maintain uh, for the purpose of bringing forth something that is true and deep for you, right? So with that, I want to begin by uh, inviting you to pause this if you're in a place to do so. Maybe you want to journal, um, but just reflect on the ways in which in your inner journey, you have already been courageous, right? And before you pause it, I want to share a quick story. So recently, I was doing a um, consulting or Enneagram informed spiritual session for a group of female leaders. And in it, there was a woman going through a really huge transition in her life, like huge on all levels. And she so bravely, first of all, submitted herself to this process where I was inviting folks to volunteer for some somatic inquiry. And she was really new to this. So that alone was very brave, right? But in the midst of it, what came up for her is around like a divorce and and uh, making a living for herself that, that what came up was actually a notion of like holding her breath. And it felt like holding her breath. And I was like noticing that language around it. And so we went into her body so she could just sense into where that sensation was. And in order to resource her, uh, I invited her to focus on where she was breathing easily. And her old story is like, I don't, I don't take deep breaths. And she's judging her breathing. And as she's judging her breathing, guess what happens? The breathing gets even shorter, right? Like it doesn't expand the breathing. And so after a few minutes, we were able to um, in bring come to a place where she simply focused on the fact that she was breathing at all. So I invited her to focus on, well, well, you're here. So clearly you are breathing, right? And so what do you notice? The way that you are already breathing. And ah, uh, just watching her face come to this place of like realization and peace. And then this moment of aha, when she was like her diaphragm opened and she's like, maybe for the first time she said, like it felt like it opened and she didn't try to open it. She didn't try to breathe more deeply, right? And I think the same thing can be true when we think about anything we're aspiring to like courage. Like there's an awareness where when you place your attention on where you're already breathing, where you're already courageous, and you breathe into that, you bring your attention to that and like breathe, actually breathe with these memories and, and however long ago or recent that you're recalling around your acts of bravery, inner or outer, right? And then now pause this, this video and, and I really invite you to do that before we go into a few ideas that are Enneagram related uh, for how you might take a look at your inner bravery. So as I reflected on bravery for each of the numbers, um, and maybe again, instead of just looking at this in terms of what you might do more of, you can look at it in terms of how have you already done this, right? If you're a type one, I think it takes extra courage to forgive and especially to forgive yourself because there's such a strong, um, super ego in your type structure that really is afraid of compassion, right? Because it's like, oh, if we're just accepting, the world will go to pot, right? And so there's a fear that if you forgive that you're, even yourself, that that lack of shooting and judging is actually going to lead to chaos. And so there's courage in taking that leap of faith to check out what compassion can actually do for you, right? So 
for type twos, I, I, again, this is really subtle, right? Which is admitting your neediness, right? Um, so for some teens, it's sort of like, oh yeah, yeah, I have needs, you know? I think there's something about like sinking into when you really own that like, oh yeah, I'm actually even needy. Um, and I'm needy in these ways. Uh, there can be shame that comes up. So again, bringing compassion to this inner gesture, but it's only through that do I really um, start to, I think, purify my uh, vice of pride, right? This idea that like, I don't have needs like these lowly humans, right? Other people, they have needs. So for threes, um, I think that the deep in interior courage is related to this being patient with your inner hollowness. You know, I know for me, it's sort of like when you look within, like the feelings don't jump out at you necessarily, right? Like what you want and what you value aren't immediately there. They take, a t they take patience. And so there's courage in being patient with yourself in the space of you're not truly knowing what you want. And so consider that. And instead, what you do is you jump quickly to figure out what other people want, what other people find valuable, and then you do that. And you're busy doing that. And then you, mean you continue to not have time, have time, make time, to discern what your true values and wants are, which are the foundation for you living more authentically in the world. I know I mentioned the vice of the two, which is pride. Of course, you know, um, deceit is the vice of the three, so I should go back to the one and say, um, the vice of the one is anger. So again, like that inner anger and releasing it through the act of forgiveness. So, so you can see how this relates to the vices of each of the numbers. So for the four, I think there's a, the, a piece around um, releasing, uh, releasing suffering that is one of the most courageous things. Because four saying thing, oh, I'm so courageous. Look how dark and deep I can be, right? But like it's actually riskier feeling. Uh, riskier to your sense of egoic identity to let go of suffering and you don't have to do it forever right because um we're talking baby steps here but how about just for now how about just for today how about just for like the next hour and see what happens when you do that like like there's an attachment to suffering within the type structure right and in doing so there's this uh, belief that like oh i suffer more right this is what gives me identity and when i release that um and then the vice of envy, which is related to that sort of comparing mind of like how I am, how I suffer more than others, um, is relinquished again, if only for an hour, right? So for fives, uh, there's a release of uh, the privacy of your feelings, right? So maybe opening up and having courage to um, actually, uh, so not just share your feelings but be with, so we're talking about interiority, right? So we're talking about like being with your feelings while you're with others, so not compartmentalizing them. So sharing uh, can be part of that, but the first thing about it is actually being with it in the midst of an interaction so that, again, it's not locked up in a closet in the back there as you are then um, interacting only through your ideas or, or viewpoints, beliefs, knowledge. Okay, so for this, oh, oh, and for the five related to the vice of the five, so that is related to your avarice, right? So we're talking about how there's that hoarding mentality around uh, keeping, keeping this like it's yours, right? Keeping it, um, keeping it close to you or protected, right? And so there's a sharing of yourself with the world that counters the five's avarice. And so for six, of course, I mean, this is a very direct thing because fear is the, the vice of the six. But I want to say specifically that you can relax um, your need to be, quote, loyal, right? Like, I think the act of courage for many sixes is being, quote, disloyal uh, to your communities or your special people or your belief system, right, to... Um, or I mean, your like certain causes in order to be true to your soul. So you can think of that as like a way that you break free from this um, conforming aspect to your type, uh, where this allegiance to this outer quote um, outer source of security actually um, allows you to be 
more authentically braver, right? Because you're not relying on that as a source of support. Um, so for sevens, uh, this interior move of being present with your heart is important. And so uh, not, not running away in your mind, but as you're here, you can recognize and invite like a presence of your feelings. But what that does is often it brings up uh, your fears that, oh my God, your negativity is gonna take you down, right? And so it's actually courageous to open your heart to whatever is arising. And especially when negative feelings uh, arise, which they're likely to when you slow down and feel your heart, why? Only because you've been running away from them, right? So it's not like that's what's all of what's going to be there, but it's because you've been running away for so long that that's often what first presents and so it can often be a deterrent to you staying. But if you stay, then you move into this like, oh, uh, you, you actually move into great, a greater sense of fulfillment because you move into the virtue of sobriety, right? Moving away from uh, gluttony uh, as your vice, where it's like that jumping to the next and the new and the more as opposed to being sated and fulfilled in this moment. But I think fulfillment like requires a fullness of heart, right? So your heart has to be online for that to happen. So that's an interactive courage. Someone might not know you're doing it in that moment, right? It's inside of you. And so the eight, uh, cur there's courage in receiving from others. You know, the first step is the outer, right? So sometimes eight's like, well, receive the gift or receive the help. I mean, I know that takes a lot of work in itself, but there's an inner practice around it that you know, you can let someone do something for you, but you're still armored in your persona, if you will. And so consider uh, that when you gently soften into the receiving space and, and like with the seven, you know, bring your heart online, it melts you. Receiving can melt you. And see if you can let that happen uh, more and more as a, just as an act of interior courage. Um, and, and, and so within that, that lustiness, right? I think there's a lustiness for more because what happens when it's just purely in this mechanistic behavioral model of the world, which AIDS often operate in, uh, which what I do, right? That that doesn't nurture uh, the spirit. And, and so your childlike innocence the virtue of the eight comes more comes forward more uh, when you show up with the courage to receive into your heart, right? Not just receive actions, but l let it let it impact and alter you. Um, and oftentimes, when this happens, I feel like eights move into tears. They are literally are moved by tears, right? Like it, this spontaneous occurrence, and there's like a lot of childlikeness in how they receive. I just see their eyes just have this beautiful innocence when they receive in that place. And so finally, the nines. Uh, so for the nines, not hiding behind the veneer of, uh, of being fine or being peaceful. So maybe the positive of this is saying, uh, face your anger admit your anger. And um, I know some nines I know have already done that, but it's not just factually, right? We're talking about risking this interior disturbance because that's what anger feels like, turmoil, volcanic even sometimes, right? And then allowing it, making space for it, not necessarily needing to act out from it, but like letting it be okay that you feel anger, right? So again, not just the fact, but courage being this interior welcoming of your, of this state, right? You are an anger type and I don't like it, honestly, when, when a lot of nines are like, I got angry and they say, I go to, I went to eight and I'm like, nines are anger types. They're in the anger triad. So your anger, claim it as your own. That doesn't mean you went to eight to, to well, when you claim your anger, it's part of nine. In fact, it's part of being human. So I hope this is helpful. Again, I really encourage you this week to focus on how 
you are or have already been courageous. So all these examples I gave, you know, just be gentle with yourself, but also be inviting of another level of truth and wholeness and soul by by giving yourself some uh, some space to breathe into the ways in which you are already courageous and then who knows what happens like with this woman she her the places where she when she tried to breathe more deeply it wasn't working right when she judged herself for breathing more deeply it wasn't working but when she just focused on how she's already breathing wow how are you already breathing how are you already courageous and breathe into that and place your attention on that and see whether it grows all right Okay, so next week we start our contemplative uh, practices and the Enneagram groups. April 15th is the week that it starts. And if you're new and you're uh, feeling uh, the call to join us, maybe this is an act of both interior and exterior courage to reach out and apply to register for our CPE groups. Hope to see you there. Bye, everyone.